Jazakir viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we do apologize for the uh, backyard noises, but the procession's a long way uh, to the holy city of Karbala. Uh, our packs and uh, they play uh, the tracks of lamentation of sorrow. Uh, so the pilgrims can be in the mood uh, of sorrow and uh, and lament on the way to Akhtan alayhi salam. Uh, you usually see me in the studio, but Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, today I was honored uh, to come to uh, the point over here. We are uh, for 1,234. Uh, you are free to join us. You are free to come here. Uh, we'll be at your service, inshallah. But I would like to begin today's, nar- uh, today's episode with a narration by Um Sadiq alayhi salam where he says, the ones who walk to the Holy Shrine of Ahsan alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend upon them 100,000 angels to protect them on their way to their beloved Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And when they arrive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record every step they take as one sin removed and a sin changed into a good deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will add another good deed in the record of that program and they are protected by the angels which is not something usual the angels protect the individuals who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sheds his love his compassion his blessings and all of his bounties upon so when we do hear this I mean it's it's amazing the view behind me uh, you are blessed to and for me honestly I, I am blessed to be in this spot right now we usually I usually have the background of Abdul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam uh, so do I do apologize for my master Abdul Fadl Abbas but yet we are here to unite ourselves with the Shia of Amir Mu'min alayhi salam and with every single individual whether Shia, Sunni, Muslim, what, what, Christian, Jew, whatever you want you, you may be we are here to join you to the march of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam one of the key points in this march is unity and how Imam Hussain alayhi salam through everything he gave he made these millions and millions of people flocking I mean I'm looking right now in the direction straight to Karbala we're approximately 10 kilometers to 11 kilometers away from the from the city center and honestly I'm looking and you cannot it's 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 packed this road is packed Imam Hussain alayhi salam and there's another road on the other side which is also packed I mean for me, it's the first time ever to uh, present the show uh, in Arba'in on this road. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the team are amazing. Uh, everything is going as planned. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you are provided uh, around the hour uh, of live shows of the pilgrims, uh, as well as what's going on uh, in the Holy City or on the way to the Holy City of Karbala. I'm usually saying, I'm used to saying, in the Holy City because I'm always in the Holy City uh, but Alhamdulillah today uh, I was privileged to leave uh, Karbala and to go on the outskirts uh, to see what's going on uh, and to join uh, the IHTV team uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen but I would like to hand it over to uh, my uh, but uh, we, we, we have we're not ready yet uh, but uh, another narration by Musadiq alayhi salam he says those individuals who dedicate themselves, who leave their families, leave their homes to go visit Imam al Hussein alayhi salam during difficult times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them paradise and He will ease their way into paradise. Meaning they will not have to go through the difficulties on the day of judgment. For an individual to endure the struggles towards Imam al alayhi salam and honestly I would like to recap something that uh, my dear brother um, uh, Sheikh Muntal al Karbalai and my brother Hussein Sukhni yesterday and, and their night show they mentioned something is that we are not shackled we don't have a shackled Imam an ill Imam with us we do not have little children looking up looking for their fathers searching for their brothers searching for their uncles women looking for their husbands or for their brothers we are here free. No one is imposing danger on us. Some may think that there is danger, but honestly, if there was danger, 
30 million pilgrims have dedicated their lives to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to the point where nothing will stop them. A couple of years back, I think in 2008, 2009, where an incident happened and a few people were hurt on the way to Karbala. One of the fathers of some indiv- of uh, his son was hurt in that incident. So he went back home and he grabbed the rest of his family because he, he said dying on the way to Imam Hussein alayhi salam is counted as martyrdom according to the narration of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. This individual has cognizant understanding of the Imam. Now we are not saying that there is danger on the way to Karbala but of course the way that is difficulty in the means of walking some people will take it in the means of you know a lot of crowds are here and it's, it's somewhat difficult to move around very quickly these small difficulties which are difficulties to us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ease our way into heaven and what better thing do we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you ask an individual a believer of what he desires from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first thing that would come to the mind of a believer is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him as well as entering paradise free of sin now this desire is established this desire is and can be accomplished through this great march I mean I'm in Karbala and I'm, I'm thinking there's a lot of pilgrims I don't know how Karbala is gonna take that many pilgrims and honestly being today over here is is huge because thinking of Karbala being packed now and millions and millions haven't even arrived yet I mean if, if you look behind me you'll just see crowd after crowd after crowd the people of Basra have joined the people of Hilla they've joined the people of Diwaniya the people of Diwaniya they joined Hilla and they joined Najaf and all of them are coming to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and I would also like to touch upon the merits of the ziyara but after inshallah we'll come back from my brother uh Hussein al Sukhni who is on uh, the street uh, leading up to uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam so over to you brother Hussein thank you very much brother Ahmed from up above uh, yes indeed the atmosphere here in the walk to Karbala is truly astonishing especially this early compared to previous years where it gets this busy you know closer closer to the day of Arba'in now we've prepared a report for you earlier we were out you know, exploring the, the path to Imam Al-Hussein seeing the different maqib seeing the people uh, crying their eyes out walking to Imam Al-Hussein so we have prepared reports for you on how it is this year compared to other years in regards to numbers of people and in regards to the amount of zawar and the way that uh, they are being given way and the amount of roads that have been closed down for them. So tune into the report insha'Allah then we'll continue after it insha'Allah. Apologies for the technical issues, brothers and sisters. Um, as you guys all know, Arba'in in Karbala is the biggest gathering in the world. And with the millions and millions of people here, as we would have explained in the report, there is a heavy, heavy uh, request on the networks and a heavy uh, usage of the networks and the services. So it has affected all the media platforms, all Wi Fi networks, all all networks but uh, what the report would have explained to you is that this road to Karbala from Najaf consists of four roads and these four roads two going two coming usually around this time of year 
this time before Arba'in, a week before Arba'in, only one of the roads, which is the road that I am on now, is designated to the Zawar of Imam Hussein. And as we get closer to the time of Arba'in, you know, the roads get closed off uh, day by day, and then it's all designated to the people walking to Imam Hussein because it does get busier. But this year is different. This year, now, seven days before Arba'in, already they have closed three of the roads. Last year, only one was closed at this time. Even up until the next three days, only two of the roads would have been closed. But now, three roads have been closed to welcome the Zawar. And Alhamdulillah, I mean, it makes me proud to be call myself a Shi'i and a follower of the Ahl Bayt and to be part of such an amazing experience. Now, uh, I believe the report is ready for you guys to view. So, inshallah, we will go to the report and it will be explained what is happening in the walk to Karbala. Come to me, come to me, come to me. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. In previous reports and in previous shows, you have mentioned the amount of Zawar that have been coming through this road from Najaf to Karbala. And we previously mentioned that there are four roads, four highways uh, parallel to each other from Najaf to Karbala. Two going and two coming. From the start of the Yara, only one of them was designated for the Mawakib and the people walking, the millions of people calling to Imam Al Hussein further down the line, it has become this road and the Mashaya road. But in the next two days, all four roads will fully close off. All four roads will be packed with Zawar. We were in Najaf earlier today and we saw them walking uh, all the way from Najaf and the crowds are just unbelievable, something that the eyes have not seen. More than any Arba'in that I've ever seen and I've been coming every year for the past seven or eight years has truly been something unbelievable. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen we've been here to be part of this amazing experience and we've been able to not only serve with the Mawakib and with the channel but we've been able to, to walk alongside the Zawar and the pilgrims of Imam Al Hussein. So all we can say now is Hussein unites us under the banner of Labbaik Ya Hussein. This report was uh, just to show you and all our reports that we filmed for you viewers, their viewers, is to create a clearer image of what is happening here in the time of Arba'in around the city of Karbala on the roads leading to Karbala from Mawakib to uh, Zawar to the Khadamat, the services, uh, to the media outlets. So each report is uh, designed to create, to be part of a bigger picture for you dear viewers and that report inshallah uh, illustrated how busy 
Karbala is getting uh, on the upcoming days towards Arba'in. And the estimates, uh, I think, is estimated 20 million so far uh, have or are on the way to entering Karbala so far. So closer to the time of Arba'in, expecting to go a lot higher. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you are part of this experience. And on that note, I'd like to pass it back to my dear brother, my dear brother Ahmed up in the studio. And inshallah, he can explain to you more about the atmosphere in, in the walk to Karbala. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, once again, uh, welcome back. I do thank you, Brother Hussein, uh, for preparing to us that report, uh, which was basically about uh, what's going on with the march right now. If you look at the road behind me, this is one road out of four, and two of them are packed with pilgrims. And when I mean packed, I literally mean packed. The pilgrims are not flocking in thousands nor hundreds of thousands they are flocking in millions and we emphasize on the fact of millions because this year they expect 30 million plus milk pilgrims and today uh, i had the honor to sit uh, around uh, the area here and the majority of the people when they walk past by here they always ask where the next medical center is which inshallah i would like to talk about right now the medical treatment is provided on a 24 hour scale on the road to karbala as well as in karbala 190 ambulances have been provided uh, after uh, discussing this matter with the the health department of karbala uh, i got to call them today and talk to them uh, about their preparations uh, 190 ambulances uh, are spread throughout the city of Karbala as well as on the roads uh, to Karbala approximately uh, 25 uh, clinics uh, temporary clinics of course uh, have been placed uh, on the roads to Karbala as well as inside uh, the holy city including the hospital uh, Safir hospital inside uh, the wilaya the city center uh, but what's nice about this is there are approximately 350 volunteers uh, from inside of Iraq and outside of Iraq and when I say outside of Iraq we have doctors coming from the United States of America we have doctors coming from the UK doctors coming from India from Pakistan uh, from uh, various countries uh, from the UK, uh, from various countries, have come here, have dedicated their occupations, have left their homes, left their occupations, came here to medically treat the pilgrims of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. And honestly, it's a great reward to serve and especially medically treat the pilgrims. Now, uh, what you expect when you go into the uh, clinics uh, on the way to Karbala as well as in Karbala, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove all illnesses. But uh, after eating some sort of food, or uh, and of course, do uh, avoid eating, uh, you know, not so clean food. Let's put it this way, and drink uh, pure water, so you you won't get sick on the way to Karbala. Inshallah, you won't. Uh, but just keep those things in mind, uh, so you arrive at Karbala. Alhamdulillah, safely uh, and healthy. Uh, but if anything happens in the clinic when you walk in, there's going to be uh, a reception which they will take your name, they will take what you have, they'll take your blood pressure, uh, anything that uh, you feel sick. Doctors will be present uh, on uh, in the clinics on 24 hours. Uh, doctors will not uh, exit uh, the clinics. They will always be there. Uh, and basically all you have to do is tell them uh, what you are feeling they have hundreds of different types uh, of uh, medicines uh, they have uh, blood pressure detectors they have oxygen uh, oxygen systems uh, oxygen machinery they have uh, massages uh, massage beds and massage uh, chairs that you can uh, sit and rest in and not also clinics uh, have that but other 
uh, mawakib, other processions also have these not not medicine and, and blood pressure detectors, but they have the, the processions. Uh, processions have the massages, the chairs, and and uh, the uh, the massage beds. Uh, so what's nice about this uh, is that you don't have to worry about anything when you come to Karbala. Yesterday and the day before, we talked. I talked about accommodation. Also, uh, my brother Hussein Sikhni also talked about that. We talked about food and drinks uh, and and whatnot, which are provided on a 24-hour uh, basis. Yesterday, uh, on my way, uh, we we left after uh, we left after. Uh, my night program at 11 uh, with my dear guest uh, Mr. Ms. Khaqani and we left around 1.30 we arrived here uh, around 2.30ish uh, 3ish ish, three -ish. Uh, and when we arrived here it's the pilgrims are not walking or some of them are some of them rest during the day and walk at night uh, due to uh, sort of uh, the heat uh, the temperature did rise a little bit uh, compared to the previous days uh, but the processions never stopped food is cooked on a 24-hour basis processions never stop clinics never stop drinks are from juice to coffee today in the morning we had coffee uh, breakfast is served uh, they hand out one procession uh, which is uh, just a few meters away uh, every day they hand out boiled eggs uh, today they were handing out shawarma in the morning I don't know, uh, you know, shawarma, I think it's good in the morning, but I don't know. Uh, boiled eggs, uh, they have cheese, they have uh, thick cream. Whatever you feel is, is nice to eat in the morning, you'll have it here. And what's nice about it, when they give you uh, the feta cheese, they also give you um, walnuts with it because uh, it's, it's not good to eat cheese separate from walnuts. But anyways, I just had to put that out there. So they even go to the small details uh, of providing you with... Uh, such tasteful meals uh, that they just want you, uh, you know, to feel like you're at home. You know, you, you, they want they don't want you to feel like you're foreign in this country or you're foreign walking to Hassan alayhi salam. And this ties in to the sacrifice of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam because everyone walking on this road is united in the idea that they are going to one destination. They are marching. To one city they want to please one God they want to please the Ahlul Bayt and they want to please Prophet Muhammad and they want to visit Muhammad Hussain alayhi salam but we'll go to my brother Hussain al sukhni and uh, we'll be back shortly so over to you brother Hussain thank you very much uh, brother Ahmed yes very important points you made about the medical services and other services here on the way to Karbala there are many 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 people from outside of Iraq many people from even European countries Pakistan you know East Asian company, uh, countries from China they have all come and set up Mawakib and they all have medical supplies and doctors ready at the service of the Zawar across the whole way even earlier today in fact even yesterday we were there speaking to some of those who have come from uh, East Africa, Tanzania region, from the Khoji community. They have set up a mokib not far from here with uh, a whole tent designated uh, to medical services. Uh, this is a very, very important thing you have pointed out. Thank you very much for that, Brother Ahmed. Also, speaking of services, each mokib, each person chooses to serve Imam al Hussein in their own specific way you used to you wants to utilize their skills the skills that they are best at and the, the skills that they best have and want to give it to Imam al-Hussein as a gift so someone who is an engineer would come and design newer mokibs or come design an electricity system for the mokibs someone who is a chef will start cooking certain uh, dishes for the zawar but there is one mokib we were at who specializes all day in uh, making bread for the zawar of Imam al Hussein. From Fajr time they prepare the dough and they start working on the bread up until Salat al-Dhuhr and after Salat al-Dhuhr 
the routine continues uh, and so on and so forth. And this mocap is not far from here and we had the pleasure to serve with them today. Alhamdulillah, shukr. And inshallah, in this report, uh, I'll be elaborating more on the services towards the Zawar of Imam al Hussein. It is the final night. Tonight is the final night. How can I say? As you have mentioned in previous reports, and we have seen throughout the Arba'in experience, each Mokib offers something different to the Zawar of Imam Hussein, offers a different specialty depending on experiences of the Khiddam, of the Mokib, of the servants of the Mokib. This Mokib here that we have been blessed and honored to serve with specializes in offering bread morning and night, not only to the Zawar of Imam Hussein, but also to the other Mawakib to help them serve the Zawar of Imam Hussein. So they do this from Salat al Fajr, they prepare the bread, then close to Dhuhr time, close to Salat al Dhuhr, they cook the bread and then they hand it out. After Salah, they do the same thing and so on and so forth. They prepare the bread and then they send it out to the Zawar and the Mawakib. Alhamdulillah, you know, it goes out quickly, the Zawar eats it. And uh, we ask Allah to bless such mawakib and ask Allah to grant us the opportunity to serve alongside such mawakib uh, along the way, insha'Allah. we need to remember which is very important is that the service does not stop after the giving out or the cooking of the food service is ongoing and and carries on till after the tawzi is finished in the cleaning and the preparation for the next step this is a very important point to understand because we will begin to imagine that the zawar of Muhammad Hussein have no rest the khiddam have no rest morning and night they are serving and sometimes they don't even get an opportunity to rest or even eat so we ask Allah to bless them and uh, grant them the shafa'a of Imam Hussein in the Akhirah. back to the viewers and as you saw Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen we are granted the opportunity and we are blessed enough to be able to be able to serve amongst and alongside the Zawar of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam here we have no time here we have nothing but filming and constant uh, 
bringing awareness to the world of Imam Al-Hussein. We are here 24-7 trying to create an image for our viewers and for the world on Imam Al-Hussein. So whatever little time we have spare, whatever free time we have, we spend it in the Mawakib as well as all the other brothers do here at Imam Hussein TV. Uh, we spend as much time as we can in the Mawakib when we have any free time and we serve alongside the Khattam of Imam Al Hussein and we serve the Zawar. Inshallah, we ask them to pray for us when they reach Imam Al Hussein. And on that note, and with the blessings uh, of the Zawar, I'd like to pass it back to you, dear brother Ahmed, and see what your take on it is, Inshallah. Uh, respected viewers, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, it was nice to see how uh, my, my, my brother Hussein uh, was uh, serving along with uh, the servants in, in the Mokib, the servants of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, honestly, it, it's an honor uh, to be one of the servants of Imam Al Hussein because if we comprehend the idea of service to Imam Al Hussein, peace be upon him, and service to the Ahlul Bayt, Futrus was the service was the servant of Imam Al Hussein. Jibra'il, the archangel Jibra'il, was the servant of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. The angels were the servant of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. So being among the servants of Imam Al Hussein is one of the biggest honor an individual can ever be honored with. Honestly, walking down this road, watching and seeing and witnessing how many processions are established on this road, it's a huge, huge number. Up to now, they say that there are approximately 8,000 processions on the road to Karbala, including the ones inside the holy city of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. But speaking of services, speaking of providing food, honestly, when you walk down this road, you will not feel hungry, you will not feel thirsty, you will not feel tired, you will not feel unhealthy, you will not feel anything. Because this march was established 1400 years ago by Zainab alayhi salam. This march was established by the ill son of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, Imam Zain al Abideen as Sajjad, peace and blessings be upon him. The wives of Imam Al Hussein, the daughters of Imam Al Hussein, the sisters of Imam Al Hussein, his family relatives, as well as the other uh, members of the Holy House of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, who established this march 1400 years ago. Now, we have nothing to fear as we walk down this road if we keep the only motive in our mind and that is arriving to Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam to commemorate him and of course this individual is so oppressed not Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam another individual that when we go to beseech Imam Al Hussein we remember ourselves, we remember our families, we remember everything before we supplicate to Allah for this person, before we pray to Allah for this person. And that is Imam Al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance. One of the scholars, a very well known scholar, he says every year he walks to Ziyarat al Imam Hussein alayhi salam during Arba'in. Now, this is a while ago. It's not, it's way before Saddam's time uh, when he tried so hard to stop this march, yet he couldn't. However, before this, it says that a scholar always wanted to go to the Ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and he, every year he went. But his motive was to see Imam Mahdi. Does he participate in this march? Or does he not? Narrations say that he does, but he wanted to witness the Imam. If he actually does walk, or does he not walk? And th does he join the pilgrims? So when he was walking, the Mawakib here, they're not recently established. Maybe some of them 
are, are recently established but Mawake processions were established hundreds of years ago hundreds and hundreds of years ago on the road to Karbala and especially in Karbala to accommodate and to serve the ones who walk to Imam Hussain alayhi salam now this individual when he once he slept in an area in one of the mawakib, one of the processions and he woke up at night sorry he saw a dream at night that Imam al-Mahdi may Allah hasten his reappearance is walking in front of him and millions and millions and millions of people are walking behind him to Imam Hussain alayhi salam now the next day he woke up he didn't tell the story to anyone as he was walking to Imam Hussain alayhi salam some individual came up to him and said he started he, he wasn't directly talking to him but he began to narrate what this individual saw yesterday all this, he was shocked no one knew about this dream except for him he turned around he says do not doubt that I do not walk to my grandfather Al Hussein alayhi salam. Right there and then, he witnessed Imam Al Mahdi walking to the holy shrine of his grandfather Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. This story goes to us, goes to these millions of pilgrims who are flocking towards Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. He is walking amongst you, he is walking amongst them. To commemorate the tragedy of Arba'een, to commemorate the tragedy of Karbala and what happened on the day of Karbala, on the day of Ashura. So when you reach Karbala and these footsteps of yours are blessed, trust me when I say blessed, these footsteps of yours are blessed and are highly regarded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you walk, remember Imam Al Mahdi, when you get to Karbala, Remember Imam Al Mahdi, and when you enter the holy shrine of Imam Al Hussein, never forget Imam Al Mahdi because we are in the most desperate need of his reappearance. So I'll hand it back uh, to my brother uh, Hussein Al Zukhni to see what he has uh, prepared for us. So over to uh, my dear brother. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Ahmed, um, while I am here on the street, I am here amongst the Zawar of Imam Hussein. You see many, and I've seen personally many astonishing and mind baffling moments. And this moment is one of them. The only son of a mother pushing her in a wheelchair for days, tirelessly, just so they can reach the master, the one that they are living for the reason for their existence as Abdullah al Hussein. So I will now ask him what has pushed him to come to Imam al Hussein walking and why he's pushing his mother where they could have comfortably both gotten in a car and reached Abu Abdullah sooner and without with this tireless walk insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. And to best have better off and to men jayin or ila wanted to do it and to less jayin bhat tariq al mashi. Wallah ahna jayna mneeran من منطقة القصبة يعني والله نحس يعني هذا كله انتصار للحسين كله انتصار للحسين و وأصلا ما 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 نحس بالتعب ما نش ما نشعر بالتعب ويا ريت يعني عندي بعد أربع بعد أربع يدين وادفع أربع عرب عرب عرابات أصلا يعني ما أحس بتعب و وعلى طول عمري إيش يعني حد آخر عمري ما عندي آخر رمضي أنا أخدم بالحسين وأخدم للحسين وأخدم هذا هذا الإسلام كله. So the dear brother was saying that this walk, this walk is a sign of victory, sign of the victory of Imam Hussein in Karbala because Imam Hussein was victorious in Karbala essentially, and he's saying he wished that even if he had four extra arms. So he can push four, four extra wheelchairs, all in service of Imam Al Hussein, because when you do something for Imam Al Hussein, you do not feel tired. No, you feel uplifted. Your soul 
feel uplifted. You feel like you can do anything. You want to do more. You want to push yourself to do more and serve Sayyidina Muhammad Hussein. Now they have come from Iran, so imagine him pushing his mother on a wheelchair from Iran, from another country, hundreds and hundreds of miles, countless days, non-stop walking. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, this only son of his mother has honored the right of the mother as stated in Asalat al uquq by Imam Sajjad. He has honored that right. And we ask Allah that we can all honor the right of our mother and we all uh, understand the status of the mother because heaven lies beneath the feet of the mother. Then, Akhoya, Intasa, inshallah, wa aslamin, mutajihin al Hussein alayhi salam. Shuna akub ab galbaik, kula balik, elitid, gulla lil Hussein bastasad. Mi bil mi and akshi, timshel masafat, khumutim shihichi. Akushib galbaik tit tachil lil Hussein. شنو هو هذا الشيء؟ والله انا مشيت يعني هاي الطريق كله هسه اربع ايام انا من النجف طلعت ومتوجه الى كربلاء وشي اللي بقلبي وارد اطلبه من الحسين ان ينصر الاسلام على هذا هذا الكره الارضيه و ونرفع على ابو الفضل العباس على كل السكنات اللي موجودة على وجه الأرض و... وأدعو من الله أن ينصرنا ووفقنا و... ويخلي بلادنا آمن هذا اللي أطلبه من الحسين وأدعو من الله ومن إمامي الحسين أن يوفقنا ويوفق, ويوفق هذه الشيعة وأمّة الإسلام كلها. The brother was saying that I asked him, of course, what he has in his heart, walking all these hundreds of miles to reach Imam al Hussein. There must be something he wishes to pour out when he reaches Karbala. He said that I want to ask, I want to beg Imam al Hussein to bring victory to Islam and to show the true colors of Islam to the world, not the colors painted by the media, the Western media. No, the true colors. Uh, of Islam, the colors of peace and tranquility and honor. So I ask Allah that uh, all of us can serve under the banner of Imam Al Hussein and Imam Sahib Al Zawan. Ajallah Taala Farajah. Shukran Jazeen Khuya. Inshallah Tawstum Bil Salama. O Mufakin Insha Allah. Allah Khalikum. Allah Salamkum. Back to you, Brother Ahmed, in the studio. Insha Allah, we will come back for another interview. Viewers, welcome back. Uh, I know in the last bit, uh, my brother Hussein said back to the studio uh, because we're usually uh, in the studio, but now, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, uh, I am privileged uh, to be uh, in uh, on the road to Imam uh, Hussein alayhi salam. And honestly, once again, it's an amazing view you are presented with. Uh, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant the hard workers of IHTV of Imam Hussein Media Group uh, to uh, the level of dedication they have and for the level of dedication they have towards Ahl Bayt and towards uh, Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman may Allah his his reappearance uh, but I would like to uh, recite a poem uh, it was just sent to me uh, right now uh, from a very dear brother of mine uh, inshallah uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him uh, the visitation of Karbala. I know he is uh, going to walk uh, to Karbala, but he says, Oh Hussein, we have walked thousands of miles for you to renew our bay'ah with you. Oh Shaheed, oh Hussein, oh Shaheed, oh Gharib, the Zuwar of Hussein fear none but Allah. No one can stop them as they head to Karbala. They walk with Zainab and they walk with Fatimah al Zahra. We walk with them on foot and shout, Wa Husayna. Millions walk for you, O Hussein. Their love for you has made them insane. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Muntadar, uh, Sheikh Muntadar al Karbala'i, uh, for 
uh, doing this very quickly and sending it to me uh, but I mean uh, right now it's approximately uh, 4.45 uh, p.m. Karbala time uh, that's 12.45 uh, DC time uh, and uh, I believe uh, it will it is 3 or, or uh, sorry no it is 1 uh, p.m. Uh, London time I believe uh, so we are here in the holy city of Karbala uh, coming to you live uh, from one of the roads leading to Karbala now when I say one of the roads there are the main roads to Karbala are four we have this one going from Najaf uh, to Karbala uh, on uh, the parallel over there we have uh, Halla to Karbala and where the other provinces come so from Diwaniya you come from Qadisiya you're coming from mostly the southern part of the provinces of, of Iraq you will come uh, through the way to Halla or through the way uh, of Najaf to Karbala and if you are coming from Baghdad uh, and northern uh, mis- mid north uh, provinces you will pass through uh, the road uh, from Baghdad uh, to Karbala but Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen it is amazing right now uh, the pilgrims uh, right now it's approximately sunset uh, there's another approximately an hour uh, to sunset so the pilgrims uh, are trying their best uh, it's either to catch up uh, with the ones in front of them so they can find a place to rest uh, they will serve supper uh, soon everyone uh, is excited everyone is so energized uh, for Ziyarat al Arba'een and honestly today is the 13th or the 14th of Safar uh, to be precise it is the 14th uh, of Safar six days to Ziyarat al Arba'een and when I left Karbala I left it packed with millions and millions of pilgrims and right now I thought that Karbala it's enough, enough pilgrims but when I came to this road I saw millions and millions more walking to Karbala so Karbala this year will be packed so do take your time to walk down Hassan alayhi salam for you have six more days uh, till you get to Imam Hussain and of course if you want to get there faster uh, you can uh, walk uh, a bit you can speed up in, in your walk uh, but uh, I would like to hand it over back to my brother Hussain Sukhni uh, for he will uh, show us what he has prepared for the last time for today's program uh, so over to you brother Hussain again thank you very much uh, brother Ahmed I'm here with our father and son who have been walking hundreds of miles also to reach Imam al Hussain and we we'll also ask him the same questions we ask the Zawar and try and get a consensus of what they feel of what they feel when they come to Imam al Hussain. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This young man is 12 years old and he's walking with his father to Karbala. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hajjin and Timmin Jain. احنا جايين من الشنافية من الديوانية ونجي للحسين صار لنا سنين زمن صدام نجي كنا بالصحراء نجي للامام الحسين. He's saying they're from the Diwaniya province which is south of Iraq and they have been coming to Imam al Hussein walking for years even during the time of the dictatorship and the tyrannical regime that they were coming through the deserts to visit Imam al Hussein no matter the dangers and the threats they were receiving. Then Hajin and to ليش تجون مشي؟ شنو جبركم تجون مشي متروك بون سيارة فرضا؟ مشان بدينا نذبح ذبايح للإمام الحسين ونطبخ للحسين ونسوي عزاء ولحد الآن إحنا بهاي السيرة إحنا وبائنا وبو كان هيك وأجداد كانوا وهيك وهسا كنا نروح للموصل نودي للحشيد نتبرع بشاراتنا نروح نأخذ أرزاق ونوصل للجبهة للجبهة نوصل فرد نوب ده أنكم وصين نطلب من الزيارة للحشيد وللشهداء نتبرع من زيارتنا هاي الخطوات للزي للحشيد الله ينصرهم إن شاء الله وشعب العراق الله يخلص من هذه الشدة مال داعش. So the uncle was saying that uh, since they remember since they were very young they were serving Imam Hussein in cooking, cleaning, serving zawar 
walking uh, as their parents, grandparents and great grandparents did and they teach their kids the same and at the same time while walking to Imam al-Hussein and serving they serve the boys, those young men, the soldiers on the front lines fighting ISIS and he says he's recently come back from sending donations and aid to those uh, youth uh, serving the Ahlul Bayt and defending the shrines of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as salam Zain, so Ali will let you know that أنت ليش جاي تزور الإمام الحسين؟ شنو جبارك تيجي الإمام الحسين؟ حتى أدعي له للحشيد وأدعي له لش أقرأ الفاتحة إن شاء الله وأدعي للمدرستي وأدعي لأبوي أهم شيء تدعي لأبوك. He's saying. حتى الزغرة. الزغرة. الحمد لله. He's saying we have come. قديم بركات الإمام الحسين علينا يعني أفضل الإمام الحسين. منجزات عظيمة للحسين هذا التراب إحنا علاج عندنا هذا المسح قبل الرجلين إحنا شفاء أي أي يصير عندنا مريض نخلي له من هذا التراب يطيب الدم الدم هذا اللي ذبح الذبيحة نخلي لسان شنا علاج بالبيت حتى للآل العاطلة حتى للمحرك القايم المحرك قايم من تي تخلي له قطرة من هذا الدم يشتغل للموسم الجاي يشتغل مباركات الحسين the son was saying I am visiting Imam Al Hussein so I can pray my father, pray for my family, pray for my school. It's, it's very adorable the way he was telling us, praying for his school, praying for his friends, and praying uh, first and foremost for the Hajj al Shabi, the youth defending the shrines of the Al-Bayt. And then the father added that this has been in our blood for years, the service to Imam al Hussein, and we teach our younglings to serve Imam al Hussein also. And this tarab that the Zawar walk on, now we're not even talking about the tarab of Imam al Hussein. Let's take a step back and talk about the trab that the Zawar step on. This trab is Shifa and they take this and they use it every year to heal the sick. And we thank them. Shukran jazeelan. Inshallah. Tawaskum bis-salama. Majoreen ala rasi. Bis-salama inshallah. And on that note, I'd like to thank our dear viewers of Mahatin TV. And uh, inshallah, uh, I'll pass it back on to our dear brother Ahmed. Um, and over to you, brother. Respective viewers, brothers and sisters, once again, uh, Assalamu Alaikum. We do thank Brother Hussein Al Sukhni for providing us uh, with uh, the interviews and with everything. Uh, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant you, my brother Hussein, uh, the will to continue serving Imam Al Hussein Alayhi Salam. For you are named after your beloved Imam. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant the co-workers. Uh, and uh, my colleagues at Imam Hussein 3 TV uh, and at Imam uh, Hussein Media Group the will to continue serving Imam Al Hussein. I will try my best to come back to this place and report to you. Uh, but if not, I will definitely see you in the studio in Karbala tonight, inshallah, at 11 uh, with my dear guest, Mr. Mas'ud Khaqani, once again, who will join me tonight. And you also have another uh, show coming up in approximately two hours with my brother Hussein Al Sukhni and Sheikh Muntad Al Karbalai, and will revolve around the importance and the merits of Ziyarat al Imam Al Hussein during Arba'in. So thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.